everybody, and welcome to the How to Draw Leaflings tutorial with Sundu. This should be released, fingers crossed, when the Poison Jungle is released. So I'm super excited to read the new book and see what happens to Blue, Cricket, Sundu, and especially what happens to Tsunami and Turtle in the Lost Continent. So when I started trying to draw for the Leafwing tutorial, I totally understand what a lot of you guys are saying. Leaf wings are hard to draw, and I actually restarted a couple times before I was able to get a good tutorial. What I found was that the muzzles of the leaf wings in particular are really hard to draw because of the kind of bump at the edge of the muzzle. That bump makes the muzzle shape pretty weird and very difficult to draw. So the best way to tackle it and to tackle high wing muzzles as well is to just draw the face normally like you would with a pyrian dragon and then add a triangle like almost rhino horn to the edge of the mouth basically and that way you can kind of get that ridge that the leaf wings have without messing up how you draw your dragon faces normally for sundew i decided to give her an angry scowl sort of baring her teeth since i think they describe her having a scowl at least seven or eight times in the Hive Queen. And to do that, I drew a jagged line going back towards her eye, and I left some space around the back of her mouth so that I could show her teeth, whereas at the front of her mouth, the lips are closed, so you could get that sort of scowl feature. With the horns, Sundew's horns are pretty long, so you can draw a curved line for the horns and then a second curved line to show sort of the, I guess the curvature or the edge of the curvature in the horns. And then for the fin along her back, I drew a very light, almost sandwing like sail so I could figure out the curvature of the fin along her back. Because unlike for sea wings with leaf wing fins, the middle of the fin along her back is longer than the part that's near the back of her forehead and near her shoulder. So I wanted to make sure I got that general shape before I started drawing in the details. I also went ahead and drew in the underbelly really quickly just so I know the general shape of the neck uh, and what I had to play with in terms of when I started drawing sundews, I guess leafly kind of random scattered sc scales because that's the most difficult part of the Remember that leaf wings have that bottom plate of scales and they also have a top plate of scales. And then they have all those random scattered scales. So it's good to lay out where the top layer of scales are and the bottom layer of plated scales are before you go on to the rest of the scattered scales. With the face, leaf wings have sort of a beak-like structure. You can draw in the lip ridge if you want to, and they also have uh, a slight coloration change around the edges of their eyes, which I just put there to remind myself. There's a small horn near the edges of their cheek, and they have a ridge of scales that go from the base of their horns, and actually partially on their horns, all the way down to their nose. So that's what I just drew in right now. It almost is a little bit like sky wings, that ridge of scales above their eyes. They also have the random scattered scales on their face, and I wouldn't look too closely at the reference for this, actually. I would just draw little random blobs or little random squares or circles around their face to indicate that. And you'll see that's something similar, what I'm going to do for the uh, scales on the body as well. So if I look at the shape of the scales on the body, they're kind of oval-esque or rectangle-esque. They're not perfect rectangles, they're not perfect ovals as well. And I just sort of put them randomly around on Sundew's neck and body. Wherever you see them in the reference, uh, you can add them. But I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't stick to the reference too closely. Just feel free to add those rectangular scale leafy shapes everywhere along her neck and, uh, and tail and body. Keep in mind also that sometimes the scales along her neck overlap with each other. So you'll see that sometimes I draw the scales so that they overlap the plates of scales on the bottom or the top of her neck. And sometimes they overlap each other too. I guess it's supposed to give some sort of like a leafy or bark like feel, but it's kind of tedious, unfortunately. And if you don't want to do this in your line art step, you can also do it in your color steps too. That saves a lot of time as well. Anyway, now that I'm done with that, it's on to the line art.
thing that I wanted to mention that I addressed while I was doing the liner was if you look at Sundu's scowl, you'll notice that her lips, especially on her bottom jaw, are much darker and uh, thicker and blacker than on the top jaw. And that's because from the angle that you're looking at, you can see more of the lip while she's scowling. It's a good way to draw the mouths when you're drawing a dragon snarling or scowling. Additionally, make sure to put in lines or shading around the lip to show the lip sort of curling in that snarl. And you can put lines around the eyes as well to show that the eyes are crinkling up as the dragon is narrowing its eyes and growling or snarling or scowling at whatever it's looking at. Coloring Sundu is definitely a challenge because she has so many different shades of green on her. She has sort of a dark forcey green for her scales and then a middling neutral green for her underbelly and then this kind of bright sort of almost fluorescent green for her fins. And then of course there's all the little gold flecks uh, that are that she's described to have. I decided to choose a brassy gold for Sundu's golden scales as shown on the cover of the Poison Jungle. It also works well with the dark forest green which is her main body color, which is probably why Joy Ang picked it to color her. Honestly, there's not too much about coloring in the scales themselves. No matter what medium you're using, I would definitely use a soft brush to color the scales. Like right now, I'm using a marker brush so I can vary the opacity of it, uh, depending on how hard I push onto my tablet. This is pretty important in coloring sundew in particular, which I'll explain why in a little bit, but you can also do it for other leaf wings as well, and it makes a nice effect. Alright, so the reason why I wanted to use a soft brush so I could vary the opacity of my color is that if you look at Sundu's reference picture closely, you can notice that there's a lot of gold on some scales, and the scales are more kind of a greenish gold in other areas. Therefore, when you're drawing, you want to vary your opacity. Opacity is the amount of color you're laying down with each brush stroke, basically, or it's like the amount of transparency in a color. So you want to have gold that's kind of transparent where you can see the green below and you want to have gold that's very strong in your drawing of Sundu. And you want to have different opacity for each different scale. You can note how sometimes I make a scale bright gold and then I keep the others a goldish green color. And that makes that sort of pretty patchwork leafy pattern that you can see on leaf wings. That way you also can give a sense of iridescence to the scale as well. Speaking of iridescence, that's my next step. Gold doesn't look very good if it's just this kind of brassy, dull color. To do this, you can take a layer above the rest of your color and turn it into a bright setting. In Paint Tool Sci, it's called Shine, or you can also call it Luminosity, Dodge, Color Dodge, or Add in programs like Sci, Photoshop, and Procreate. What I actually did here was I just went onto another layer and I used a brighter, more saturated color to color in the highlights on the scales. And this is good if you don't have access to those layers or if you're doing traditional art or you want your art to have more of a natural painty feel. So what I did is I used a more lurid green for Sundu's fin and green scales and a more yellowy gold amber along the golden scales. This adds a little bit of extra punch to Sundu's scales because I just scribble little streaks on her scales in brighter green and brighter gold and along her fin. It's really just a super easy way to give the illusion that light is bouncing off her scales 
and bouncing off her fin, and it makes the whole picture more cohesive. As you can see, all I'm doing is I'm just taking a flat brush and I'm scribbling in with a lighter, more saturated green along Sundu's belly plates and her fin to give sort of a highlight effect as if there's light either shining on the fin or coming from behind the fin. Lastly, I colored in Sundu's teeth which of course needs to be a creamy white bone color. And then I started on her eye. For Sundu's eyes, I actually wasn't 100% sure what color they are. I assume they're green. So I just did sort of the same type of green as in her fin and colored it my usual way. So first I made the circle of green, then I made the darker pupil and the shading above the eye. And then I took a bright green and made a ring around the pupil and a glint of reflecting light. Anyway, it's done. This is it for the Leafwing tutorial. Drop a comment below about what you thought about the Poison Jungle or any of your favorite moments from it. Will you draw any of the Leafwings that appear in the book, like Willow or Mandrake? Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.